How's it going freelancers? Welcome back to another Anthem video. If you're here, I guess you're in the crowd that actually believes Anthem can still make you through this horrendous ordeal. Well, when the bad hits, it seems to continuously hit. And it seems a Reddit user decided to make it public that a level 1 defender rifle is the best weapon in the game. And it's no joke, this is actually a thing. I did discover this a few days ago and I did report it in. They are aware of it and they are fixing it. However, it's now public and I thought I'd talk about it a little and Ben Irving decided that it was time to come clean and basically give a response to what was actually happening. But to make it clear in layman terms, the scaling of the weapon is just going way too high and what's actually happening here is essentially the scaling system for the weapon not working. What does this mean? It means that the level 1 defender is literally doing a lot more damage than their level 45 masterworks, which is, in essence, stupid. I mean, it is funny. I mean, it is a comic relief at this point. It is a joke. But it is true. The level 1 weapon is actually more powerful than your legendary weapons. That being said, if you want to go and try it out, you won't be banned for this, there is no exploit here, it's literally a case of it being a bug, the weapon doing too much damage, and it was basically an unfortunate side effect by design. So if you want to go try it out, feel free to try it out. I mean even Ben Irving here sees the funny side to it when someone creates a thread saying can we just please agree that the default weapon bug is probably one of the funniest and dumbest things ever seen in gaming. Ben Irving responds, I think it's funny, unfortunate, but funny. We are on it, and it is already fixed for March 12th. Like I said, it was something I already noticed and did inform them. And though as amusing as it is, go out and enjoy it while you still can. If you're wondering how this happened and why it happened, we also have a response for that as well. Ben Irving goes as far as saying, The short version is we wanted you to have a good experience when unlocking a new javelin. As a result, we did some things to start to loot, so you wouldn't be gimped at first. It ended up being a bad idea. Here we are, and that is literally as transparent as you're going to get. I know people are crying for transparency and constant explanations, but and people are at this point actually hampering Bioware and Ben Irving and Mike Gamble and Mark Dora and everyone else for not being transparent, but I can just direct you all the way to Bungie headquarters where it's pretty much like a prison cell over there when it comes to trying to get any form of transparency. People complaining about Bioware not being transparent? I mean, really? I mean, these guys have been as transparent as humanly possible. Even they have limits as to how transparent they can be and how much information they can reveal. They aren't in charge of everything, so they are still limited by what they can say, but they have been, in my honest opinion, as transparent as possible. The amount of transparency here is pretty refreshing from a company that is governed by shareholders. So do keep that in mind. But this issue is fixed, you can go try it out. It is an unfortunate side effect. It is quite funny that the best loot in the looter shooter game is actually the starter loot. So, I mean, you gotta see the comic relief side of this, but at the end of the day, go out, have fun, and enjoy the game. So another one that's actually quite hot at the moment, which won't be in the patch note, which won't be in the patch fix on the 12th. So this one needs to come really, really quickly. What we assumed, was a UI bug with the health bar actually is not a UI bug. In fact, Ben Irving went live on Twitter again with transparency to say the health bug isn't just a UI bug. I was wrong, we are on it. Pretty humble if you ask me, they genuinely believed that it was a UI bug through their testing, but they've now realised that it actually is an issue and not a UI bug upon actually trying to fix the UI bug. And that actually revealed that there was something wrong here. So they are going to fix it, it's not going to be in for the 12th patch, but it will come shortly after. That being said, at least we now have confirmation that this is actually a thing, you're not going crazy, you're not dying quicker than you should, and ultimately, once this is fixed, that will be the end of that dilemma. Next I wanted to talk about something slightly different, which was basically people saying that Bioware is dead, Anthem is dead, and all of this where Anthem is going to go free to play, Anthem is basically going to shut down, Anthem is gone, Bioware is gone and all this. But a tweet from Annie Washing, which I hope I pronounced correctly and if I didn't I do apologise. I'm not very good with foreign names. But she tweeted out, having a blast creating new Anthem scenes for you all. Hashtag Anthem Gamers out there. 
mocap. So what does this mean? It basically means that they're doing a lot more motion capture for us, which basically means more story related content, more cutscenes, more scenes from potentially new characters. I mean, we saw the ominous character at the end, right? So that will be a new threat that's now here and they are going to be expanded. So there's going to be more scenes for that. So we can already see that Bioware is looking well ahead when it comes to evolving the world of Anthem. They aren't stopping here. They're not holding the brakes. They are on full alert. But this tweet here shows that the investment from EA and Bioware to make Anthem work, to make Anthem succeed, is here. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing none of these motion captures, which cost a hell of a lot of money, by the way, and a lot of resources and a lot of time. They would just try to do damage control and fix everything as, as main priority. Which, don't get me wrong, they are doing that. And this side of the department hasn't stopped, which means that they aren't just looking at the now, they are looking at Anthem as a live service to develop over the next two three years and hopefully within the next month wishful thinking i know but hopefully within the next month anthem will finally be in a place where we can call it a launch build i mean it's a it's in a pretty bad place right now everyone knows that but i'm not gonna lie i don't experience the issues you guys experience maybe it's youtuber luck or maybe it's streamer luck i don't know but other than a couple of crashes here and the god awful loading times that everyone experiences, I'm genuinely not experiencing anything. I don't experience the shutdown bug. I don't experience the crashes. Yeah, a couple of contracts have had problems, but I've not really experienced the problems that people are experiencing. I mean, the PC crowd alone, I'm not even getting involved with that one. That one's a complete train wreck. But for console, for me, it's been pretty good. So. It's good to see that EA and Bioware are still investing money and looking ahead. They are fixing issues. Um, this tweet alone shows that they are still in it for the long haul. And for those people that are saying Anthem is dead, Anthem is gone, Bioware is dead, Bioware is shutting down, EA is going to just abandon everything. Well, this one thing here proves that that is as far from the truth as possible. And they are pretty much going all in to make sure this product is successful. And you know, I know people are saying that the Division 2 is launching in a week. Maybe that's a blessing. Maybe once the Division 2 comes out and people start playing that for a few weeks or three, four weeks, they finish the game and they finish the main campaign and they come back to Anthem, Anthem will be in a much better place and a refreshing change. At the same time, Anthem and the Division and Destiny are completely different games. One offers flying, one offers sparrow racing, the other one offers foot running. Now nah, that's just not fair. The Division 2 is a fantastic game. I'm also covering that on my channel. So if you want to stay up to date on the Division stuff, make sure to be here as well. But seriously, all three offer a different versatility of gameplay. All three offer a fantastic range of content, with the exception of Destiny, which offers you no content other than Gambit. But if you're interested in military shooters, definitely check out the Division. If you're interested in your superhero Iron Man stuff, Anthem is where you want to be. This tweet here just tells me that they still have faith in the product, they still are investing in the product, and as a consumer, that gives me confidence that they are still in it and still wanting this to succeed. They could easily just cut ties and say, you know what, we're done, but they're not. They're still investing and still make and still want this to work. And as long as they want it to work, I'm happy because it means that the effort is still there, the desire is still there to make Anthem great. And I believe within four to six weeks, they can do this. So maybe the release of The Division 2 is actually a blessing in disguise. And the last bit I wanted to talk about is uh, inscriptions. It seems the developers at Bioware decided to make a massive Reddit post. I did post this in my previous video, but I'm going to link it here again. It's a really good read. It tells you everything you need to know. It's pretty much like an encyclopedia. If you have any questions that aren't actually answered in here, put it into the comment section and they will respond. They are taking this very seriously because they know they pretty much messed up with this. Um, this is covering everything you need to know about inscriptions by the developers for the consumers. So the link again is in the description below. Check it out. And uh, hopefully this will answer every bit of question you have regarding inscriptions. And anything that's not working, place it in there and they'll respond and it will put it on their radar. Right. That's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. So... This last bit is pretty much what I'm dedicating and I'm going to try and do this at the end of most videos if I can get a collection of Javelin art. It's basically what I call on my Discord Fashion Javelin. So here I'm pretty much going to just let the images play out and give you guys a creative outlook 
as to how people are designing their javelins. If there's any you actually like and want to know more about, let me know in the comment section below and then I can try and get the actual the color palettes and designs for you to replicate said fashion. Right, thank you for watching. I appreciate every one of your viewership. And until the next video, 